especially in editing. I mean, in the final, uh, the final film, of course, but in the editing, it's very important. And uh, I pay a lot of that attention to, uh, to the sound, and I'm preparing nearly everything. I mean, I'm doing, I'm trying to work on eight tracks maximum, because after that, it's a, it's a mess, and you have too many tracks. It's too heavy to. Uh, to handle, so so I try to use just eight tracks, and if we if we have uh, a collective plug, maybe uh, I'll, I'll show you uh, the project I have here, so I can show you my, my timeline. So I usually um, so you work first of all, of course, with the MC sound, all the lines of the actors and the, the direct sound. So this is uh, usually in stereo. You have uh, I mean it's not in stereo; it's on two tracks. You have the uh, usually the uh, HF uh, for the voices and, uh, and a wide uh, microphone to get uh, more of the ambience. So I always put them centered, I mean not in mono. And then I use the uh, six um, other tracks to uh, for, for music and, and wild sound. And I try always to have um, the spirit of the scene, sound-wise, uh, being really exposed in the cut, even in the first cut, because uh, it gives you a, a lot of the impression of what the film is about. You know, if you choose a, a wild sound, you know, with little birds and everything, it will give you a feeling. If instead of the little birds you put the thunder, then it's going to be a different scene. So it's very important to give direction. And then, of course, we have uh, sound editors working uh, very precisely, and from eight tracks that I give them, they, it's just for inspiration for them. I mean, it's not an obligation to go that way, but uh, of course I'm working with uh, very dear friends and uh, people I've been working with for years. And uh, we talk a lot about the sound. And they know that uh, the sound I have put is the direction that uh, we, the director and I, like. So they're going that way, except they do it in, with the hand tracks. Very clean and very clean and very nice. So my soundtracks are, are not are rough in terms of uh, the number of tracks, but they're very clean. I mean, we're doing a lot of uh, screening with the sound, and people don't realize it's not the finalized sound. So, uh, so sound is really, really important. Music is really important, too, of course. Because uh, when you put music, uh, it doesn't put the same uh, feeling that um, the scene without music. The choice of the music. Um, so yeah, in, in a cutting room you have to uh, to play with all these tools and uh, try to uh, try to find the, the right balance between all of them. In, in, in music and in sound, it's, it's an ongoing conversation also about the, the usage of music with lyrics. It can be very tricky uh, to use it uh, in, in, the, in the editing, not to clash with, with the lines of the film. Um, do you have any special uh, worries about about this? Um, not really. I don't. I don't think I used a lot of uh, music to the lyrics on the films. Uh, well, uh, it, it depends. I mean, usually if you have lyrics, then uh, then it's it's uh, it's a tune coming from a radio or a TV or it, it's usually not uh, a score. You know, being applied to the film with, with the lines. I mean. I think it's always weird to, we had this in, in the City of Lost Children at the end of the film on the, uh, the final credits. Uh, we had this uh, great song composed by uh, Angelo Badalamenti. And, uh, and it was, I, it, I always felt it was weird because of course when you write songs about a film which is finished, then the, the lyrics, they, they have, uh, they get another meaning. And uh, I think it's very complicated. It's very tricky. I'm not very fond of it, I say. But of course, if you put uh, I don't know, a Rolling Stone uh, song uh, on, um, on a Scorsese film, it works perfectly. So, so there's no room. <laughs> start uh, trying to connect um, FS computer. Um, but meanwhile, um, I'll ask if somebody can wants to
come in into the in, in, and ask something about what FS said uh, what FS said so far.